All right, guys, in this video, we're diving into this motor to see what's really going on. So the issue is, guys, like obviously there's this gob of silicone, something is broken here, somebody tried to seal a leak. We're gonna find out what it is, but most likely this side, the one case, is gonna be busted. But every gasket on this bike looks like people put silicone on it to like help it seal. And that might be the problem that what's going on with this motor. Besides that giant gob of silicone, you can see somebody has put JB weld or some sort of putty all the way down the center. And it goes all the way from the exhaust to the, the oil drain. And I think that, <clears throat> I don't know if it's actually damaged or if they just had a bad gasket and decided they didn't want to pull the motor apart to fix the gasket. Because they have silicone on every seam of this dirt bike. Like you can see here, that's, there's the gasket. I don't know if they tried to reuse one, but why is there silicone on every seam? This, you don't need silicone. You shouldn't be using silicone. That's no good. So this motor has to come apart. Now we're looking inside the cylinder here and hopefully I can hold this camera steady enough, but it looks like somebody put a brand new piston in this bike. The cylinder walls don't look too bad in the back there, but that piston, it's pretty new. It's still got all the machining lines on it. So that's what makes me think that they just siliconed everything back together. And that's probably what they did on this seam. The same as what they tried to do here and it probably leaked. So this is gonna be a nightmare to take off. We're gonna to have to like die grind that, but it goes all the way, all the way under, down there some more. Like pretty much, I don't know. There's no oil in there. There's no oil, so why were you gooping that? We'll see how bad it's beat up once we get it apart. <laughs> We're just looking down inside. Now there's some moisture. Let's see what you guys can see. Some moisture building up in there. Probably for me washing it and not really caring, knowing that this bike was coming apart. But otherwise, no big scratches or gouges. A little bit of dirt, but we're gonna get the cylinder off and take a better look. I don't see any major dings or anything. We might get really lucky on this one. Come on. There we go. It's almost like nobody put assembly lube or something in it. It feels pretty stuck. <clears throat> Just gonna tap it out gently. Somebody bought a piston kit, but the bearing I think is the wrong size. Let's take a look at the crank, see the play. No up and down play. Huh. Other than having some water down in there. It's pretty good. I bet there's nothing wrong with this bottom end other than this case. That's too bad. So we're bringing our piston, our rod up top. We're checking for up and down play. There's like no up and down movement. There's a little side to side movement, but no up and down movement. So that's really good. I 
think we're gonna get a little bit of a wire wheel and try to remove some of this to see what's going on. So what we're trying to do guys is just cut this crap, whatever it is, JB Weld or whatever, out of the way enough that we can get at that gasket so we can split these cases. Uh, and then we'll take a better look at it when it's all apart, see if we need to replace the cases or if we can salvage these ones. The gasket that holds this on is all of $2. And he must have used $10 worth of silicone or gasket maker to create that gasket that only costs $2. Don't do that, guys. Don't, don't spend more money on the fake gasket than you would just buying the gasket. It is so glued, glued on, I can't, I can't get the cover off. It's just glued on. There, for the love of God. Well, at least it has a clutch. The basket's in actually pretty good shape though. Well, somebody took their time and did some of the inside stuff right. I don't know if those are the right bolts though. But then, you know, they, they didn't, uh, they just beat the hell out of the case. See. So we're gonna pull the flywheel out so we can get the stator off. Uh, we've got a dirt bike repair flywheel puller kit. You don't need to buy the whole kit, uh, but you do need to buy a puller to help you pull that. So how they work guys is that there's threads on the puller itself and it threads into the, the flywheel and then when you crank this down it pulls the flywheel off. I thought I would never be fine. I strive just so it's really important guys to not lose the little keyway. And for the first time in a long time I'm so that little keyway needs to be not lost. You're going to need that to hold it back all together. We'll go ahead and pull the water pump cover off. So if you guys have seen my videos, the other ones, we, uh, we make little templates for our bolts on covers because those bolts are going to have different lengths and it's important that they stay in the proper spot. Now, because this bike is so out of whack, let's say, with the way the bolts are and silicone and stuff like that, what you can do is go to a website like Partzilla and they'll have an explosion view of this cover and all the bolts. And it'll tell you it's a number six thread bolt and it's 20 millimeters long or whatever it needs to be. And then you can measure the bolts to make sure that they're the right length. And again, the silicone is going to be a bit of a fight for us. Just give her light taps. We're not using a steel hammer. It's a dead blow hammer. And I'm just tapping on the case, allowing it to, to pull apart like that. 
be mindful of the water pump gear. We don't want to lose that. But yeah, you can see that the silicone did nothing but create a problem. Uh, again, the guy beat the hell out of this and he bent the tabs the wrong way. He's bent the tabs down instead of onto the, oh well. We've actually got a pretty neat tool from Motion Pro. It's a gear jammer. So you wedge this into your, uh, your gears on your motor and it doesn't allow it to turn so you can loosen your, your, your nut on your clutch. We take our little gear jammer and it can go in here and jam these up just like that, right? So we can tighten uh, when we tighten this and on the other side when we loosen. So one thing I like to do guys is like when I pull an assembly of gears out, sometimes I'll put zip ties on the end so nothing falls off. Or another thing I do is I like to put the whole assembly in a Ziploc bag. Um, just helps me keep it clean, keep it together. So this assembly will go in a Ziploc bag. Uh, it's easy to figure out where the other big gears go, but like this whole assembly, we'll take it out and we'll put it in a Ziploc bag, take the washer that goes with it, put it on there. So we can look at the explosion view later and know exactly how it went, but this way we know this all goes together. And I'm not stuck with one washer in the bottom of the box going, oh no, where did that go? So it's time for us to separate our cases and you want your motor in this orientation. So when you split the case, your transmission and everything still left somewhat intact. Um, we've got a bike master case separator today. This is the one we're using. I've got a couple different ones. This one's pretty good. Uh, we just thread in these holders and then the bolts thread into them that actually help separate the case. All right, guys. So when I'm pulling the cases, I like to do them by hand. I don't like to uh, put an impact on them. Uh, some guys do, and that's fine. But I'm a little worried about this JB Weld goo. And I want to try and keep an eye on it and see if it is separating. So we're going to start applying some pressure. Ooh, she is tight. Oh, I think we just broke the JB Weld free. We sure did. Did it break the case at all? It doesn't look like it. So the case popped pretty good. Uh, the JB Weld let go. I see a little piece that might have chipped, but it might just be JB Weld. Maybe that's what they were trying to fix. We'll see. We're gonna keep going. It's coming pretty good. We just wanna go nice and easy. We don't wanna to get too aggressive. There we go. It's off the guide pins in the front. You got one guide pin in the back here. If you have to, you can give it a little tap. Like I said, you can give it a little tap. We're using a dead blow hammer. We're not hitting it very hard. We also have a rubber mallet. Seems to be a little better. Case seems to be free. May have to uh, get a little pry bar in there. It's my little baby pry bar. We don't want to pry on the aluminum too much. We're just prying where the uh, the mount runs through that holds the swing arm. Everything's loose. All right. All right, guys, so we're gonna pull this case off now. Gently. Stuff's falling, of course. What I'm finding, guys, is chunks of silicone everywhere in this bottom end. From every, whoever put it back together using the silicone gasket maker everywhere they could has got silicone into the tranny. It looks like it's in every bearing. 
yeah, it's kind of a mess. So guys, just your everyday black zip ties are your best friends when it comes to your transmission. And I'll show you why. So what we like to do is zip tie the transmission together uh, and all the washers and everything that's in there. Just like that. So hopefully we can kind of keep them together. We're going to try and take both stacks out at the same time. So now that we got the transmission out guys and they're zip tied together on their shafts, we've double checked the motor, made sure there's no washers or anything left in there. We like to bag them up in Ziplocs in case the, uh, the zip ties let go in their own Ziplocs. Ziplocs are cheap. My time is not, I, I just, uh, I don't want to lose track of any of the pieces. So that way I can check all the pieces against an explosion view and a diagram and make sure that uh, they're all there because in the condition of this bike, I don't know who the last guy was who had the motor apart. It's obviously been rebuilt and uh, we wanna make sure everything's there. All right, so we're gonna try and remove the crank out of this side of the case. It's pressed in. Uh, so we're just gonna hit her with the dead blow, see if I can drive it out. We're gonna kind of float the case. I don't wanna break the case. And I want to hit it. See, I don't even think she's, but oh, a little bit. She went a little bit. So because we're going to do the bearings and everything too, we're going to soak it with a little uh, penetrating oil because I think it should be able to slide out pretty good. If not, we will have to try and push it out. There she goes, guys. I think this crank is still good. We'll have to get it checked, but it feels like pretty much brand new. So we're just gonna use a socket and, and drive the main bearing clean out of the case. Just like that. <clears throat> And we don't want to throw any of the bearings away. That's one thing to note, guys. You want to keep them until you get your new bearings to make sure that you got the right bearings. So on the left-hand case, there's a few bearings that are easier to take out with a blind bearing puller. And uh, a few you have to. Uh, you can try to heat it to get these out, but just one little tick, out she comes. So guys, we've got all the bearings <clears throat> out of the motor and you can see here what they've done you can see a small crack at the bottom and then the weld didn't hold either so then they JB welded it and you can see another crack over here you guys might not be able to see it we're gonna end up cutting most of this off and we're gonna end up re-welding it and fixing it properly uh, we'll show you that process in another video but before that happens, these cases have to go to a uh, vapor blast and get all cleaned up. Now I've looked and looked for cracks or anything along the, the edge. I think that the gasket was no good at one point. And instead of trying to split the case to fix the gasket, they just JB welded it. But otherwise the cases look pretty good. Canada's worst dirt bike might be an understatement for Project 93. Uh, everywhere I look, there just seems to be a little problem I didn't know about or, or, but that's how it goes with these old bikes, except in this motor. The transmission was, is perfect. There's nothing wrong. Everything moves and works perfect. All the bearings were actually really good. Uh, there was one that was a little bit questionable. The crank seems really, really good. The only issue was that giant JB weld mess that goes from one end of the motor to the other. But underneath of it, there's nothing wrong. I was expecting to see a quarter size hole, some sort of cracks or something, letting oil pour out everywhere. But there, there's nothing wrong with the cases. So that's, that's a huge bonus. Um, the only issue with the one case, with the, uh, the right hand case, is the backside of that kickstart shaft. But that's an easy fix. We're gonna grind all of that off, whatever they tried to fix and I'm just gonna fix it properly. I'll TIG weld it all up and it'll look good. 
Uh, anyway, guys, uh, if you like the content, like and subscribe on the video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's anything you guys do that's different or any tool that I don't have, maybe I don't know about, because um, I'd, I'd like to try it. I, I like to try new things and, you know, I'm sure there's a million ways to do it and you guys probably do it different. But yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one. I won't quit, keep going till I